Hi everyone, it's Victoria here, and welcome back to another episode of Black Art History. So today I'm going to be talking about networking in the arts. I think it's something that's just not talked about enough, um, simply because universities just don't have the tools to help you most of the time, or that other careers are more popular. I remember at my school, it was a lot more networking for tech and for Wall Street, so I felt like I didn't really have much support when it came to networking in the arts. So I kind of found ways to create it for myself. So I'm going to give you guys five tips today on how to do that and how to really be successful in your networking endeavor. So step one is be confident. So I think that's one thing that's just hard to do in networking in general is to have that confidence. But in the arts, it's even more important because there's so few positions available, especially at um, museums. So when you're walking up, you're, you're competing with a lot of other people for the positions that are there. Um, so make sure that you're showing your confidence and also showing that you've been putting your homework in. So read up on the different museums that you're applying to or read up on whatever auction house you're looking to work for because they're going to want to see proof that this is the place for you. You need to be active in the art world. You can't just walk into the museum and not know any of the artists. Um, so being current and being um, pretty vigilant on what's going on uh, socially in the museum is important as well. Uh, second tip is cold call. So you might think in the 21st century like that's not necessary anymore, like we're in an age of tech, but I think an old-fashioned call can be really useful when setting yourself apart from other applicants. So what you want to start doing is um, find the email address for a person you're interested in and just ask them, introduce yourself and ask them if they'd be available to speak on the phone sometime. And that's one thing that will set you apart immediately. Um, people of our generation just don't speak on the phone enough. So to say that you want to speak on the phone at all is setting you apart from a lot of the other people applying. Um, and in those emails that you send, make sure you use buzzwords. So, you know, for the subject line, it's really important because someone at a, a top museum or in a top position at any kind of um, company or institution is very busy and they get a lot of emails. So you want to make sure that subject line sets your your in email inquiry apart from other people. So for example, when I was at school, I put my university um, and say like university student. And that would often work, especially when looking for alums. So always tap, um, tap into your alum network because one, they really want to hear from you, and also two, those emails are available through your school. Um, so use your alum network. I think it's one, for me, it was one of the strongest resources to finding people in the arts world. And if you want any kind of scholarship, um, that's what I do now. So now that I've, I've won the Fulbright Award, I always put Fulbright in the topic line or subject line for an email, and I often get a lot of responses. So I know it just seems a little bit like clickbait, even if like what you're doing doesn't have to necessarily do with the award, um, but people just want to click on something. So make sure um, to kind of try to list some of your accolades in your award, but not to excess. So um, maybe like I wrote recently an email like Fulbright Scholar slash my university, uh, and that kind of had um, some good feedback. So just try to set yourself apart not only verbally when you meet someone but also in your emails as well um tip three would be don't forget scale so that's the difference in the art world it's much much smaller so you might be networking with someone in the auction world one day and then someone in the museum world the next day but those two people know each other um or something that happened to me recently was i went to go visit two people at the same place um, at different times and different days, um, but because the office was so small, um, I actually ran into someone I had been shadowing with on the elevator when I was actually having an appointment for another person. Um, so that was a little bit awkward for me, but you have to realize that the world is really small, the museum world specifically. So there's just a small limited amount of offices in even a big museum like the Met or um, just make sure that when you're meeting with people, you're being very purposeful with who you decide to email because most likely they know the other person. Um, so don't just go off and email everybody in one museum and just hope that somebody emails you back. Send maybe two 
um, and see what happens and then follow up with more emails because they might say, oh, like, Joanna, have you heard, did you see this email from Victoria, uh, the student from the United States that sent me this email? Um, because it's, it's a small office. So um, to, just to kind of avoid that awkwardness, just make sure that you're not reaching out to too many people from the same institution just because the world is so small. Um, fourth tip would be LinkedIn. That is a great place to one, advocate for yourself um, and also to find other people who are doing exactly what you're doing and seeing what kind of experiences they have. And then three, in order to actually meet people in the museum field and to talk to them. So like for I posted about my own a Fulbright Award online and it got over 50,000 views. So that's a great way to have my name on different people's LinkedIn's. Um, so just make sure you keep updating because you know the next time you post something, it might be seen by a lot of people. Uh, secondly, it was through viewing other people's LinkedIn's, I was able to see what the stepwise process to becoming a curator was. So uh, yes, like you know, you work at different museums, but to see like what other people were doing specifically, like what museums they were working at, how long they were working there, it helps you get an idea of one, like your competition, um, and two, what the different paths are and how to leverage those different paths because not everybody's coming from a curatorial internship here and a curatorial internship here. People are really um, peppering their their job experience. So make sure you take a look at that and see if that's something you want to do as well. And also use LinkedIn to contact people directly if possible. It's a great way to just contact curators or different people working in the museum. Um, so what I'll do is I'll do a boring search and I'll like type in the museum name and like on all capitals, like my university. I'm able to see everyone who's gone to my university or has some affiliation with my university and is, has worked at the museum in the past. Um, and that way I can see that quick cross section. And I've been able to contact you a lot of people this summer using that method. So don't sleep on LinkedIn. It's a great way to contact people, especially if you don't have your email addresses. Um, some people it's a bit harder to find on there, but usually use LinkedIn, definitely use it. Um, and the fifth and final tip would be keep in touch. So as a person in the arts world, you're always interested in what's new, what's going on. So um, the people that you're talking to are gonna wanna hear about what's new, what's going on with you. So often, you know, if I've been networking with someone, I'll just kind of send them any major updates because I started networking um, in the arts during my sophomore year. I was actually doing like relatively nothing, um, just kind of interested in the arts, but didn't really have anything um, up my sleeve or anything I'd done already. So now I've reached out to those same people that I was networking with my sophomore year and kind of updated them on what I'm doing and how I'm studying in London now. And I'm going to School of Oriental and African Studies, and then I'm on a Fulbright Award. I wasn't doing all that two years ago, but now they might be able to help me more in the museum field just because we've been able to build this camaraderie over the last couple of years. Um, and now they're gonna see me and think, okay, if I'm thinking about coming back to the States, I've been seeing this undergrad and now she's a graduate student and this might be someone you really wanna think about for a job offer. So just make sure you keep in touch. Sometimes that's just a quick email saying, thank you for letting me, um, kind of talk to you on the phone or visit at your respective institution, but sometimes people can be really generous as well. So like this summer, someone let me shadow for four days, so I sent them a, a proper letter in the mail. So it just depends on what that person is letting you do or what the experience was like, but just make sure to really um, thank the people who are taking time out of their day, but also just to keep them updated for the networking component. So thank you for listening. Um, networking's a tricky topic, a tricky topic. So just make sure um, to comment below with any questions that you may have or any further videos you want to post on networking, jobs, that kind of thing. And I'll catch you here again on the channel. Bye guys.